Hey guys, it's Maike here and today I'll be telling you about the electric instrument in Ableton Live. Electric is a software electric piano based on the classical instruments of the 70s. Each component of these instruments has been modeled using physical modeling technology to provide realistic and lively sounds. So there's no sampling, no wavetables, but the sound is calculated in real time by the CPU according to the values of each parameter. Now the concept behind electric is to try and emulate how electric pianos work. A note is played on the keyboard and this activates a mallet that hits a fork. The sound that the fork makes is then amplified by a magnetic coil, which is this pickup, and then it's sent to the output, very much like an electric guitar. The fork is made of two parts, called the tine bar and the tone bar. The tine bar is where the mallet hits the fork, while the tone bar is a tuned metal resonator sized appropriately to produce the correct pitch. Once the fork is activated, it'll continue to resonate on its own for a very long time, but releasing the key applies a damper to the fork which mutes it more quickly. So as you can see the various sections in electric instrument, and by tweaking them you can emulate the sound of an electronic piano. The global section over here contains parameters that affect overall behavior and performance, such as your pitch bend and your polyphony. The names of the knobs are fairly descriptive, for instance your stiffness, this would be the hardness of the mallet's striking area, the force, the force at which the mallet impacts the fork, which is this guy here that resonates and makes the sound, the noise that the mallet makes when it hits the fork, and then your fork parameters, the color of the time, how many high partials there are compared to low partials and so forth, decay level, similar controls for your tone, as well as your damper. Your attack and release here adjusts whether or not the damper noise is present when the dampers are applied to the fork and when they are released, so I will demonstrate that shortly. And then your pickup, the symmetry has to do with your vertical position of the pickup in relation to the tine, how far it is from the tine, the input, so whether it's got a lot of signal coming in or a very little signal coming in, and then the output. So these two controls really impact the sound that you're getting at the end, whether it's high distortion or like a lot of air. And then you've got your global controls. You've also got different pickup types and you've got some velocity and key modulations so that the velocity of your incoming note can impact certain parameters. So in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to make a preset and narrate my way through it so that you can see how to use this instrument and make your own e-piano sounds. So let's go. So this is just a standard um, sound. Now, I'm not really sure what I'm going for. All I know is that this has like a high frequency in it that I don't like. Yeah, it's the stiffness. So I'm just going to lower the stiffness a bit. As you can see, I'm just going to play around a bit, listen to the current sound and think, how do I want to improve it or change it? Is it close to what I want or is it very far away? What needs to change? So this sounds very standard, so let's like make it slightly more interesting. Um, I didn't like the stiffness of the mallet, I didn't like the sound of the, the metal, I guess. I quite like having this interesting attack. I'm just increasing the level so you can hear it. So I think that's fine. That's too intense. So often when, you know, deciding how to change your parameters, go from one extreme to the other, completely switch it off, usually rather go from a lower volume to a higher volume, because if you just start with the loudest possible version, you're going to clip the sound and possibly damage your hearing. So don't do that, please. Please. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm racing through this fork. I mean, this is a very straightforward instrument. It's not like operator where there are lots of different levels and things. Color. So remember, this is the tine. This is not the tone. So this is not going to impact the, the main sound. It's the first kind of resonating body that resonates then into the tone. That's quite bright. Yeah, let's just leave it bright, but lower the level. That sounds too low pass to me, so. Now you might think, what's the difference between 42% and 50%? I mean, it's so subjective. It depends on even the speakers you're listening to. I'm working with headphones at the moment, and 
I can hear a difference. This sounds too low cut to me, but that just has like a resonance that I don't like. You know, it takes just a little bit too long for the sound to fade. So I want the sound to fade a little bit sooner. But I still want to hear, I still want to hear this tine color. So yeah, there's no like right or wrong. There's just general principles you can follow. So if we were making like a pizzicato instrument, you'd want your main tone to have a short decay. Um. See now, as I'm working the sound, I'm realizing I don't like the stiffness anymore. I don't like the force. You know, as, so as you go along, it's kind of normal to go back and tweak parameters as you shape the sound, kind of like a sculptor would. Take a piece of stone and get the general shapes, and then I guess with the sculpting, it's a bit different in that if you cut off too much at the beginning, or if you chip off too much, that's a bit of a problem. So, you know, subtle moves are often good, and then just keep going through things subtly. That's an approach. Anyway, I'm talking too much. Back to work. Oh, that's the damper. Sorry, I want to work on my tone. <gasps> I have an idea. Okay, I now know what I want to do. I want to make it like a lo-fi e-piano for those of you that want to do lo-fi hip-hop. See, now I have a better idea of the sound I want to go for. I want it to be a bit more mellow. Like that, but that's... Let's change the pickup. Mm. And the decay can be longer. Sounds still a bit too like electronic for me. I want it more mellow. I'm thinking I'm still gonna add some other devices. It will show you. Um. Now one thing I haven't been doing is I haven't been adjusting these velocity um, things, so how much the velocity affects the stiffness. Maybe a little bit, not too much. The force. Uh, does the velocity affect the decay of the noise? Mm, no. I'm not too hot on that. Um, the tine. I think that's fine. And then do I want my pitch? The higher I go, do I want it to be stiffer or less stiff? I think maybe also a little bit. I'm just going to do some subtle changes. Um, and pick up the pitch. That was just a bit too bright for me on the high end. Um, haven't done much with this damper. Got a few minutes left. Can't really hear it, so... There, I can hear it. Do I want it to only sound at the beginning? Or at the end? Maybe at the end? But not that much. The tone. So I'm just going to increase the level so I can hear the tone better. That's a lot more mellow. Just gonna decrease my volume. All right, cool. Now we've got an e piano. Now, quickly, in the next like two minutes, I want to make it sound a bit more lo-fi hip hop e. Just in case my computer shuts down, let's just call this lo-fi e piano. And um, so let's add some vinyl distortion. No, I don't like that of it. Hmm. I'm actually not too hot on these distortions. I'm going to keep it low. What I want is this crackle. Hmm. 
Cool. And um, let's add frequency shifter, I think. We'll do the trick. I want it to sound a bit like a tape. Like, wow, wow. Add some LFO. A lower rate. Sounds a bit too in my face at the moment. Got like a minute left. I think actually it's a bit better with a lower level. Like very small. Low rate. So add some spin. Spin just detunes the one side from the other in terms of your stereo channels. Oh, I love that. No. I'm not doing ring modulation because that's going to be a completely different sound. Hell no. Just want a very subtle. Even 10 hertz is too much. 5 hertz. Maybe a bit more LFO. That's too much. All right, my time's up. If I had more time, I would um, change the tone of this e piano a little bit. It's it's just a little bit too like new, you know. It doesn't sound old enough. Yeah, so I just play around with that a bit, um, but you know. You know, a simple EQ would also help with that. And it's not bad. You know, you can always make it sound um, older in your, your mixing or, you know, further processing. So that is the electric piano in Ableton Live. I hope you guys learned something new. I'm sending this preset out to my mailing list subscribers. You're welcome to join that. The details are in the description of this video. And I'm sending it out when I'm done making videos of all the Ableton Live manual, which is like in three videos time. How exciting is that? Um, and I will see you soon in the next one.